Hazard Mitigation Analysis, the HMA. This is step number one. This is the first thing that you as manufacturers, you as installers, um, you as you know, property managers that are looking for properties, this is the first thing that you need to talk about is do we have an HMA for our batteries? I had someone come up recently um, and say, well, sometimes when we pick a site, we don't know the technology. Okay, you normally have a couple in mind or two or three. So make an HMA with all three technologies and then we can just get rid of the ones that you don't end up using. But let's start this hazard mitigation analysis early. Because what it does is it looks at the consequences of failure. And, and if you look at the Phoenix Fire Code, we require this for every single battery installation. 855 and the base International Fire Code has three different um, criteria, but we're looking at these all the time. We wanna know what happens when something goes wrong. What happens if your mechanical ventilation uh, fails? We have explosion control. Okay, that makes sense to me. What happens if my fire protection system um, doesn't work or my smoke detection system doesn't work? What happens? What are the consequences? And that's what this analysis does for us. It goes through all the different consequences of failure and says, this is what's going to happen. And this is how we're going to try to avoid it. Or this is how we're going to deal with it. And that's the number one thing that we're looking for. Hazard mitigation analysis take a long time to create. And they actually take a long time for us to actually review. So make sure you guys do these early and get these to us as quickly as possible. So do you give us time to go through these? Who is ultimately responsible for developing and driving the HMA process? The BES manufacturer, the engineer, the owner, the contractor. So who is ultimately responsible to uh, for the HMA? It, it's gonna be the, the installer. It's gonna be the person that's coming to me saying, hey, we wanna do this project, but they're gonna be hiring you know, an engineering firm and the engineering firm is gonna be the one that creates this. But at the end of the day, just like the plans, it's gonna be part of the submittal package. So it's gonna be on that installer or that developer Whoever is the one that's coming to me, we're going to be asking them for the HMA and it's me on them to hire a, an engineering firm or whoever it might be to create that. But at the end of the day, it's the person that's coming to me saying, hey, we want to do this and we're being the ones that are going to be the ones submitting the plans. Code actually does a really good job talking about hazard mitigation approval. You know, how can I approve these HMAs? There's different ways that we basically can say, hey, we're going to approve this HMA. The McMicken incident, we have deflagration hazards is going to be addressed by an explosion control or other system. That's huge for us. We know that these batteries create enough flammable gases to create an explosive atmosphere. So we want to make sure that the deflagration hazards are addressed in the HMA and I can approve it.